Hi, my name is Keith Larson with Control Magazine. Thanks for joining us here at Emerson Exchange Studios. And here with me today is Jeff Hackney. We're here to talk about the importance and the benefit of upskilling uh, your workforce. So thank you for joining me. Yeah, good morning, Keith. Thanks pleasure to have me. you here. Lots of companies, no news, especially in the industry, manufacturing, are struggling to fill, fill positions. We've got retirees uh, moving on, and, and it's a struggle to fill those positions as well as upskill the people we have. Can you you know, share share more on what you see as the challenge and why companies are having difficulty. Yeah, it, I think it's a global challenge. It's yeah. not uh, regional by any means. Uh, uh, really, the challenges begin with just having available workforce. Mm -hmm. Uh, people entering as new employees out of the university. There's also the upskilling of in the incumbent workforce mm -hmm. is another challenge. And then a third challenge is really creating a, a new culture within companies mm -hmm. to facilitate that change of uh, approaching training a little bit differently within organizations. And that presents some opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, there's opportunities to partner with higher ed and, and local um, and regional authorities as well as fellow uh, industry manufacturers uh, and then there's an opportunity to change the culture within an organization to upskill their employees which has the added benefit of letting employees know that they're valued and recognized within their organization which lowers the probability that they'll leave the organization. Sure, feeling some sense of indebtedness to the organization as well. well yeah. Feeling valued. And yeah. valued too, yeah, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what does what has Emerson been doing to help your, your clients? Obviously an opportunity to bring some of that technical uh, educational services to your mm -hmm. to your clients. What, how are you tackling that, that problem and helping them? Yeah, there's a few things that we're doing. One is we're renewing our relationship with the universities. We've, al we've always had a strong relationship with the universities, mm -hmm. but we're renewing that in a, a little bit more of a strategic manager manner by developing new tools uh, for universities that, that help facilitate um, really the exposure to new technology as well as having tools that can facilitate a, a rapid training process both for uh, the new students entering the workforce but also for incumbent workers and so that's another area that we're helping in developing training programs for our customers mm -hmm. so they can train their uh, their employees on more than just product training expand that training portfolio a little bit mm -hmm. and then the third way you know we're, we're helping to uh, address this is really working with customers uh, to interact within their community uh, it, it really takes a partnership between the end user higher ed the vendor community, Emerson is a part of that community, and the governments. So those are some ways that we're helping address this. Yeah, I was curious about the um, working with the uh, universities. Is there a, a sweet spot where it makes most sense? I mean, I usually think of, of uh, companies like Emerson getting more involved in technician training, you know, the two-year mm -hmm. degrees coming to college. Is it, mm -hmm. is it broader than that, or has that expanded? It is. You know, we, we have a history of working with both two-year and four-year institutions. Um, Historically, maybe we had a little bit more of just the pieces and parts, putting an instance of Delta V in a u university or some transmitters or some valves. Mm -hmm. And we're rethinking that approach. There's more of a, a desire to have integrated plant environments uh, within these institutions so they can do more real life troubleshooting. Yeah. Um, so a best practice to answer your question mm -hmm. is really to see collaboration amongst industry, universities, vendors, and government sure. to both help set a vision of where you want to be five, ten years down the road in terms of the pipeline of resources, but also to help manage how do we fund and get to the, the point that we want to be in the future. So that's really, I think, the best practice we see. Another best practice we see is when uh, you, within your own company, again, going back to this culture, yeah. you establish a culture of, of uh, knowledge transformation within your organization. We've heard you know, digital transformation coined uh, recently a lot <laughs> in some cases. Yes. Um, but there also has to be a culture change within organizations to have a knowledge transformation that, and again, going back to the value of the employee, as well as to extract the full value from the systems that you've in invested in. Yeah, no doubt about that. Well, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to share your perspectives uh, today. Um, again, this is Keith Larson, Control Magazine, signing off uh, from Exchange Studio. This has been a wonderful talk, and uh, good luck in, in your future endeavors. Thanks, Keith. Take care. Appreciate it. Bye now.